Circular saw blade performance is described in terms of geometry. In this video I'm going to connect math with real life and I'm going to show you and discuss hook or rake angles, clearance or relief angles, bevel angles, top and side. So these four angles are on the menu. I have an assorted uh, variety of blades here. Let's get started. Now during the video I'm going to have to reposition and reshuffle the blades. It's going to take a little bit of time. Please be patient. Give me some slack. Okay, we'll get through this. So, first, a hook angle or rake angle. I want to relate a circular saw blade to a circle. It's not the same as a circle. It would be close to a disc, but features of a circle can be found on a circular saw blade. It has an origin or it has a center of rotation there where around about which or around which the saw blade rotates on the arbor or the uh, shaft of the motor and as I have drawn here the radius of this saw blade can be located pretty much the same way as it is on a circle with the exception that this one doesn't have a circumference this one has a jagged edge Hence, it's not a circular saw blade, it's a circular saw blade. All right. Another grammar item is the word radius. The plural of this one is radii. There can be many radii drawn anywhere on a circle or on a circular saw blade. Just anywhere on this one. But for the hook angle, we're going to need one that leads to the tip of the sawtooth. Let me get you a close-up on one of the teeth here and I'll try to work with one of them there we have a nice sharp picture all right so the following should be noted before my story here unfolds real fast this one is the sawtooth this is made of carbide carbide is a composite material made of carbon and and metals okay it's sintered sintering involves baking it in a kiln in an oven it is a ceramic material by definition all right and and is uh, brazed to a mild steel saw blade all right so when we talk about these angles we're going to be talking about the angles that the carbide tip forms or around the carbide tip okay so any other details on the saw blade or its color or whatever, ignore. So when the radius is extended to the tip of the sawtooth, like so, hook angle, let me just rotate it a little bit for maybe a little more light. There we have it, that's better. A hook angle is formed between the radius there leading to the exactly the tip between the radius and the face of the tooth that's the face of the carbide tooth this angle here is your hook angle when there is air such as right now between the radius and the hook and the uh, and the face of the uh, carbide this is a positive hook angle or rake angle on another saw blade I have uh, Right now it's about, say, 10 degrees, 15, I don't know, 10. We'll go with 10. I'm just eyeballing it, okay? Here's another saw blade from a circular saw, a skill saw. Let me just do the same thing with the straight edge here. There. You can see that on, on this saw blade, this hook angle or rake angle is bigger. There is more gap, more of an angle here between the face of the tooth and the radius all right so that's your rake angle there that's even bigger than on the red one on this saw blade it's very nearly zero it's almost a zero degree saw blade just by just by looking at it even without a straight edge you can tell that it's it's going to be pretty close to zero maybe maybe a five degree angle if that it's probably just it's probably exactly zero. There we have it. We'll, we'll call it zero. It's a zero degree hook angle, okay? Because the 
because the uh, radius when it's extended to the tip of the tooth there is perfectly parallel with the sawtooth and here I have a negative hook angle which is going to unfold this way when I extend the radius to the you can you can see already that the uh, that the radius the straight edge hits the carbide there at that point you can see there's a there's a gap here so uh, in this situation I'm gonna slide this one underneath and again extend it there extend the radius to the top of the saw tooth there you can clearly see that they overlap okay there is absolutely no air gap between the radius and the face of the saw tooth there's actually maybe a five degree overlap okay, this would this straight line here with the pencil tip that would be the line of the radius and just trying to fit the pencil in there while the camera is in the way you can see the tiny sliver of carbide maybe a three degree or a five degree angle negative hook angle all right uh, let me explain what these hook angles do okay so that's negative hook angle zero degree hook angle maybe 10 degree hook angle uh, maybe 15 degree hook angle what these hook angles do is they determine how aggressive the blades are how how much material they bite for every tooth when they remove the material let me uh, demonstrate here with this handy dandy garden rake very straightforward here when the rake and rake teeth or these tines on the rake when the rake tines are at approximately 90 degree to the surface they are worked on you know that the rake angle grabs a lot of leaves or a lot of gravel or dirt whatever you're raking it works really efficiently here in this angle at this angle it grabs a lot of material when the rake is on a 45 degree angle such as approximately there and you're raking this way it still works wonderfully well if you tilt the rake further, say to a 22 degree angle, I'm just eyeballing this, you know that the rake is not really grabbing much material, it's more like for leveling now. If the rake is at zero degrees, it's absolutely not grabbing any material. Raking this way would be nonsensical, but it's, it works for leveling wonderfully well, but it's not really raking anymore at zero degree. Now we can do negative rake angles, how about negative 45 degree this way and of course this way it's not raking anymore it's bulldozing the material in front of it it works it does work you know you know you can move gravel or uh, or leaves with it this way as well now it's a negative 45 degree angle okay so something like this works with the saw blades and this one here the positive 15 degree angle hook angle or rake angle really really aggressive it bites into the material and if it's uh, if this kind of saw blade wasn't a radial arm saw it's really unsafe and unpractical this this and this were mounted on a compound miter saw and they worked wonderfully well and the negative five degree angle is a dado blade this dado blade uh, has another set of blades they what the full assembly could be half inch thick five eighths three quarter inch thick whatever thickness you want to give them and they and they plow a channel into into the material say if you want to mount shelf standards on a cabinet gable and you want flush mount shelf standards they plow a channel consequently this one grabs the material really well and cuts fast and aggressively and this one needs quite some push it 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 needs a little extra horsepower or uh, from the motor or a little extra gauge of wire or uh, from the from the extension cords and uh, and a little bigger breaker because uh, because this one needs just more amps to push it through because it doesn't really bite into the material oh it will chop your fingers right off no problem but um, in you know just in comparatively this one goes through material really really easily 
And this one will need a little more encouragement, and we'll we'll eat uh, uh, into your uh, into your budget a little bit because it's taking more electrons to rotate and cut with this one effic efficiently or effectively. Uh, so that's a uh, rate of material removal, and that's uh, that's also safety related. Uh, I want to show you this picture here, which I have prepared on the same idea. So here is the radius coming from the center of the circle. This is the, uh, I just made this big picture, the carbide tooth brazed onto the circular blade body. And uh, those are just my notes here that I've discussed or mentioned. And here is your positive rake angle there. It's easy to define it to be between the radius and the face of the tooth, but sometimes in some literature you can see it upside down, like a midair above the tooth. It's the same thing because the face of the tooth has just been extended in that direction and the radius has just been extended in that direction. So it's the same, it's the same angle, the same concept, but uh, for my mind it looks best this way. But in some literature, like I said, it looks that way. No big deal. Okay, next one is clearance angle, and that relates to another math idea here, and that math idea is tangent. The tangent line, I just dropped my pen, the tangent line is a line that is square or perpendicular to the radius, hence I have this square here, so a tangent line would run here, like so. Let me just extend it there. There, this is a tangent line. Tangent is Latin word, it means touching, because it touches the circle only at one point where it's perpendicular to a radius. Now for this radius, this tangent line is, this is its tangent line. If I had another radius drawn here, then the tangent line would run here and for another one it would run here. You get the idea, for an infinite number of radii, an infinite amount of tangent lines can surround the circle everywhere. So, the tangent line is going to be featured in the clearance or relief angle. Let me just get the nice picture focused. There we have it. So the tangent line runs, say, here, let me just tilt it a little further down. There, we'll, we'll live with this one. And so the clearance angle or relief angle, let me just, there, if I look up, there, the center of rotation there. This is the radius coming through to the tip of the saw blade again. Let me just adjust it a little bit there. So this is the clearance angle here. And don't get sidetracked by where the red blade material is. Again, we're looking at the carbide tooth. And the, the because the red blade material may or may not follow the actual angle the carbide tooth has. Okay? In this case, it seems like it follows it, but in this case here, with the blue saw blade, that might be a completely different situation. All right, so the clearance angle, the top clearance angle or relief angle is this little bit of an angle here. I have, of course, another piece here with a big picture on it. Same idea, here's the carbide tooth. This is where the radius is extended in a straight line to the tip of the tooth. And now it's upside down because we looked at it that way. But there is the tangent line and that's the clearance angle. The angle is formed between the tangent and the top of the tooth. Okay, that angle there, that little, that little wedge. It's also called relief angle. And for me, for my mind, the most sense uh, it makes the most sense when it's defined uh, between the tangent and the top of the sawtooth, but uh, 
again the same idea this top of the sawtooth that line can be extended further that way and it's the same angle sometimes it's drawn out in the air same stuff okay clearance angle at the top so top clearance angle because there's going to be a side clearance angle coming up or relief angle all right uh, why this relief angle is important is uh, two things heat and sharpness uh, okay uh, third and the third thing impact all right let me explain this is the cutting edge here where the material is being removed from this is the material here and a sliver is being removed from it and that sliver is making a chip and it's usually whether it's wood or metal or whatever and the chip is curling up here all right this is the material being removed that's cutting edge this is the clearance between the material and the carbide tooth that's why it's just clearance angle if this carbide was made pointy like like so like really really pointy with the cutting point with the cutting edge and its point made at exactly the same spot it still cuts but it has a much larger clearance angle we don't want a big clearance angle because that leaves the carbide tooth this part here very thin and the impact every tooth the shock load that every carbide tooth is subject to and the force acting this way on it it's just gonna break it and chip it because like I said this is a sintered material a ceramic material baked in a kiln comp and and compressed in a mold it's like forming a, a, a pottery ceramics you know clay and just squish it together to form it under pressure uh, that's how carbide tooth is formed in a mold under pressure in a die and uh, and then baked in an oven so if it's too skinny here it just breaks off under the shock load of cutting okay uh when it's thinny skinny if it doesn't when it's thin and or skinny and it doesn't break off then it overheats because it's skinny if it overheats then it breaks off and if it overheats it ex it breaks off because it expands and the tip will be very hot and it's going to be gradually colder and colder uh, or cooler and cooler okay it's going to break off the if you have all this carbide here behind the cutting edge here that's supporting and has the back of the of the cutting edge here imagine the atoms here on at the cutting edge uh, being the front line here pushing through this material physically tearing out the uh, the fibers or the or the atoms of the of, of metal or wood whatever you're cutting from here and that shearing and tearing action uh, needs a lot of support here behind it all right so this clearance angle is low to ensure that this carbide tooth doesn't overheat and doesn't chip off during the shock load of cutting if this this part here is uh, is big and strong then it also acts as a heat sink all right so shock absorbing uh, and as well as uh, the longevity of life everything combined that's why we have typically low top clearance angles but there has to be a distance there usually you don't have to measure this or work with it but uh, just be aware of it that uh, saw blade a cheaply made blades or aggressive blades may, might be skinnier uh, with the carbide teeth and they and they break off such as the case I have a couple of chipped teeth on this one I don't know if I can find one fast enough no and the chips are really really small okay no no yeah I don't see it through yeah, I'm not close enough for it okay so that's the clearance angle, the top clearance angle or relief angle, and that's uh, what it's what uh, that's what relates to it. The last one is the is the bevel angle and the side clearance, and those angles are best seen this way. 
and for this I need another 3D geometry item here all right so here at the middle of the circle the center is where the origin of a circle would be or the center of the rotation is if it's mounted on an arbor it's actually rotating this way because the teeth are yeah oriented this way so make sure you don't put your blade backwards on now uh, the blade rotates around this point here in the center so this pencil would represent the axis of rotation okay the bevel angle at the top or top bevel angle is defined in relation or in terms of being of, of a line being parallel with the axis of rotation so let me have two hands on this one I'm holding the edge of the ruler now parallel ish parallel to the axis of rotation okay this would be not parallel this would be not parallel and uh, this is this is parallel it can tilt it doesn't matter but okay this would be parallel here with the axis of rotation this straight edge now is parallel with okay I think I found the chip uh, chip tooth it's missing right there maybe I just pried it off two seconds ago but nah, I don't see it on the paper here so maybe that's a chipped tooth there so the top bevel is described in relation to this line parallel with the axis of rotation there have a little close-up of course I'm hitting the camera with the blade and I'm trying to focus it there you can see that this bevel is formed so so that if this line is touching the tip of the saw blade there the tip of the saw tooth sorry at this point there where the pencil is then this is the high point here this is the higher corner and the other one is the lower corner uh, there you can you can kind of see it so you have maybe here in the air about maybe five degree top bevel angle on this one something like that it is a small feature but the other one of course is is alternating bevel so the left hand corner let me just get my finger through the hole in the middle the left hand corner here is higher and this pencil side the right hand side is lower so it's so this bevel is laid out alternating uh, so this one is say the same five degrees just the opposite way okay here is the next one this side is the high side the left side is the low side five degree alternating bevel on this one because this is a cutting a trench a dado saw blade uh, the teeth are not alternating the, the teeth all have the same direction of bevel this one has zero bevel look at this look at the top of this tooth it's parallel with the direction of rotation or the axis of rotation so that's flat flat top this one is bevel in one direction their big carbide tooth you can see it well and the next one is flat again and the next one is bevel the same way with the left side being higher there another flat top and another bevel the high side being the left side here all right and the so that's the top bevel angle and the last one is really really hard to see is side clearance I'll explain the side clearance oh uh, the top bevel angle what's the meaning or what's the big deal about this top bevel angle again this is a sintered carbide tooth if it's if it's left too skinny and too thin then it breaks more easily now if it's the, the skinnier sorry about the camera going in and out of focus I'll try to keep it somewhere where it doesn't change the focal distance okay so the pointier it is the sharper and nicer it cuts around the edges it doesn't chip the edges if it's nice and sharp if it's just blocky like this with no bevel whatsoever this is gonna chip the 
side walls of the cut, but this tooth is designed to be narrower than this one. This one is forming the side walls of the trench, the or the saw curve the tooth is making and the side clearance angle is uh, I'm gonna show you how, it's, how it works the tooth is wider at the top than here at the bottom okay I don't I can't hold two pencils and the saw blade at the same time but the bottom of the saw tooth this carbide tooth is here the top of it is here the top is wider than the bottom here alright I have a picture about it Oh my finger, this is what I have in mind, the top of the carbide tooth is wider, the bottom of it is narrower, and the side clearance angle is formed there along the side. This ensures that the carbide tooth doesn't get stuck in the saw curve, and there's the top bevel angle. Alright, so that's, that's what these angles mean, these ones as well as these ones. Uh, it's, it's a balance. Manufacturers try to balance cost, longevity, resharpenability, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of chipping along the edge of the cut the blade makes. Uh, so you don't have to hone these saw blades or sharpen these saw blades or do anything with these saw blades, but the price is dictated by how much geometric design goes into the saw blades and how much thought and how well they make the carbides. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all I have to say about this geometry and uh, how it works with real life.